hoping to find a child from heaven falling on their knees down before the
just felt this. Some of you are already doing it. Amen. It's not hard to say the name of Jesus. Amen. It just flows from our tongue. Jesus. And I know some of you have struggles and challenges and pain. You have questions. There seems to be no answer. There are debts. There seems not to be enough money. But I want to remind you today that there is a name that's above every name. It's above cancer. Amen. It's above COVID. It's above bankruptcy. It's above warrant. Amen. I want you to know it as they sing this. I want you to think about all your troubles and all your questions and all your doubt. And I want you to call on the name of the Lord. Jesus. Rich and rare, 
Can every one of us give the Lord a hand praise? Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Praise the name of the Lord today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. You can be seated for a moment. Amen. One of the greatest revelations you will ever receive is when you learn about the liberating power of praise in your life. Amen. When you can know that God is able to take a terrible circumstance mixed with your praise and transport you to a place that's not like where you are. <laughs> Amen. It may be nothing changes, but changes you. Sees things in a different light. Amen. I'm thankful today to be here. I'm glad today. Amen. Thankful for Brother LT or Ricky, whichever Brother Ricky would like to go by. Amen. He was here Wednesday and we baptized him in Jesus' name. And we're thankful for that. Amen. I know the Lord's going to fill him with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Also glad to have Sister Suzanne here today. She's going to get baptized here in a little bit. And I believe she's going to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. In Jesus' name. Somebody say praise God. Amen. Also glad to have Sister Garcia and Sister Little here today. Thankful for them to be here. Be sure to get around and shake our guest hands today. Amen. Before they leave. Amen. You know, the other day in my memories, through the advent of technology, I don't have to remember things. I get reminders. Amen. My watch tells me I need to breathe sometimes. And uh, that's good. And... Uh, uh, but the other day, I got, had a, a picture pop up uh, six years ago, I think it was. Sister Tamaya got baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember it. I didn't remember how long it was. But I think uh, six years ago last week, was it? Got baptized in Jesus' name. And it's so good to see that what was good six years ago, it gets better, doesn't it? Amen. And we love, we love Sister Tamaya. And I tell people, amen, you know, salvation isn't, no doubt it does happen in a moment. We are saved in a moment. But what we get in the moment becomes better and stronger and richer and fuller and greater and gooder and better. Amen. And you, wanna, you want to uh, make what God gives you better, just keep coming to church, keep praying, keep repenting, keep loving, keep, keep, keep asking the Lord to lead you and guide you, and He will continue to do the work of God in your life. It's hard for him to do anything if you don't give him any time. And one of the ways we give God time is just being in church. Amen. Some of these people say, well, I don't need to go to church to be saved. Amen. Well, you, 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 you write those words down. Let's see where you are on that great getting up day. Amen. I believe there's going to be a lot of people that have regrets. Amen. When it's too late to do anything about it. But I'm glad you're here today. Amen, because we are glad, we, we was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Amen, look at your neighbor and say, I sure am glad I came with you today. Amen, amen. I, I pray that the Lord would touch all of those that are not here today. I know the Lord uh, needs to touch my father. I have heard of others that are sick as well. And, uh, amen, there are some that are sick in the body and others are, sick in other ways. They need a touch of Jesus on their life. Amen? And uh, if we could, let's stand together and uh, let's pray for everyone. Amen? That you may have awareness of someone that has a need. And just mention their name in prayer right now. In the name of Jesus, 
I pray, God, that you, O oh God, would touch those, Lord Jesus, that have an infirmity of the body, weakness in the body, sickness in the body, and Lord Jesus, that may have a weakness or infirmity in the spirit and the soul. Lord God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you, O oh God, would do a work in their lives. In Jesus' name, bring wholeness to them, Lord. Bring wholeness to them, O oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. I'm going to read to verse 12. Amen. I'm going to read verse 1 if you'll read verse 2, and we will just take that until we get to verse 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where? When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus... It is written by the prophet. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Very good. And when they had heard the king, they parted, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Amen. Y'all did real good. Praise God. Amen. For just the next little while, the wisdom in worship. Say that with me. The wisdom in worship. Amen. You could be seated. My next text, I'm going to read Psalms chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hath crowned him with glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say praise God. There we go. Everybody say the wise men. What could motivate men, wise men, men of substance, and reputation to climb up on top of their camels and ride toward an unknown. But they knew what they knew was a prophecy. And from that there was a living hope that these men had been motivated. They were motivated to go and worship. 
not based on anything more tangible than a prophecy and a heavenly anomaly. Pretty good there, uh, rhyming. Might write a song here, Brother B.J. Nothing more tangible than a prophecy and a heavenly anomaly. The gifts of treasure and substance, they followed the starry light to worship a shepherd king, a king of shepherds. The first to worship him, no doubt, were the angels declaring in the heavens, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. They sang this and declared it in the hearing of simple shepherds. And those shepherds, trembling and inspired of awe and wondered, went to where the angels said, and they found the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, and they knew something miraculous had happened. And they went and told everyone, we saw the angels and we saw the child. And everyone heard about this event. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, held these things in her heart. Amen. I think it is interesting that in the procession of worshipers, you have those that traveled a long way with much wealth. And you have those that came very from very nearby that were poor and probably had very little to provide. And so those that had to come a long way, they brought great gifts. Those that didn't have to come very far just brought themselves. But we find Jews and Gentiles, the rich and the poor, together they were touched with the the, the, the declaration of the incarnation. Those close by saw angels, those far away saw a star. Amen. I want you to know God, amen, so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. No doubt there were millions of people that did not see the star and they did not have the wonder. They had no desire to worship. But there were a few good men, wise men, wealthy men that were willing to go far distances because there was something inside of them that said, i got to find this king of Judah. And in the same way, some were just down the road, up the hill, through the woods. That's where they came. And though Jesus was born around thousands, tens of thousands of people, just a handful of people came and worshipped Him. Amen. I, 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 I hate that it's true, but there, there seems to be a, 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 a always a few that have a desire to worship God. Amen. The ability to worship God is not based in a pedigree. It's not in a, in based in a formal education. And it's not simply based in ignorance or simplicity. But it is found within the heart of an individual that has been touched by God. And somebody says, I want to touch him back. Amen. I've been seen by God and I want to see God for myself. Amen. Amen. I have been greatly affected as of late as I have considered a few things I saw a sequence of images and it made me begin to think and read and wonder the the vision of the wise men these wise men of the East, many agree that they were from an order called the Magi or wise men. They often were found in the courts of kings and kings would look to them to solve mysteries and look to them for wisdom of the circumstances of the day. You see a picture of this in the story of Joseph. The king has a dream. And he asked all of his wise men, interpret this dream. These were the wise men. You see the same uh, uh, situation happen in the days of Daniel in Babylon. 
the king has a dream and can't remember the dream. And God, there in that place, had a man who God would use to interpret the dream of the king. And it was this man, Daniel, Daniel, who became the, the ruler of Babylon because though he was in an inconvenient place, he had suffered unspeakable uh, uh, infamy, uh, shame. But in that place that no one would choose, experiencing something no one would choose, in that place that was far from convenient, he was, he was faithful to God. And the Bible tells us that all the other wise counselors of the king, they hated Daniel because the king loved Daniel. And we know it's familiar. They knew the only way that they could bring persecution on Daniel was a concerning his faith in God. And so the, the, only, the only thing they could find to criticize about Daniel is he was a praying man. So they got the king to make a decree. The decree was you can't pray. Well, Daniel prayed like he always prayed. Three times a day he prayed. And ultimately he was thrown down in the bottom of a pit with hungry, ravenous lions. And the king prayed all night. And there uh, Daniel was at the, at the morning light. And the Bible says the king called down to Daniel and said, Oh, Daniel, was your God able to deliver you? And the, Daniel answers back and says, Oh, yes, king, I'm still here. And from that, the king declared that everyone should worship the God of Daniel. And, and through this testimony, Daniel became the, the, the leader of all the wise men in Babylon. And we today, we have the writings of Daniel in our Bible. But no doubt, in my mind, there's no doubt there was an influence of Daniel that permeated the culture of Babylon. And even hundreds of years after the death of Daniel, in that court of wise men who had been around a man of vision and revelation, it had permeated them. And these wise men, hundreds of years, generations later, they knew there's a king coming out of Bethlehem, Judah. And when they saw the star from a long way off, something they'd never seen in the heavens before, amen, they said, I got to go see the king of Judah. Amen. Amen. I, 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 uh, I have done a little thought of this in times past, but never quite like I've considered it as of late. To the visible eye, if you're on a very clear night, probably a long way from the city, probably where Brother Dwayne lives, out in the country. If you were able to count them, the visible stars at night to the naked eye is about 5,000 stars. That's a lot of stars. Even if you could see them, you couldn't count them. You imagine how hard it would be to try to remember where you stop counting. You not, might need to take a drink. I mean, you, can, you don't have no way of like pinning it in the sky and say, this is where I stopped. I'll come back tomorrow night. Right? I think it takes um, hours. I, I had it written down somewhere. To, to, to count to 5,000, it takes, well, at least 5,000 seconds. Somebody, I think it's 14 minutes, isn't it? Anyway, don't, don't, don't pull out your calculator. Anyway, 5,000 to the naked eye. But today, because of technology, really a telescope that's 30 years old, they launched it and it is hanging in suspended space, uh, 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 peering in to the vast, unseeable things from the earth, but they have glimpsed into the stars. And just simply gazing into a part of the sky that you could see with your naked eye, the size of an eraser, just itty bitty, the size of an eraser, Hubble is able to glimpse through that, that focal point and see billions and billions of light years away. 
And in that, they have began to try to imagine how many stars there are in the sky. They say that in our galaxy, the Milky Way, there are approximately a trillion stars. A trillion, it's hard to even imagine how much a trillion is. And they estimate that there are, if our galaxy has a trillion stars, they estimate that there are 200 billion galaxies. That's, that's unimaginable. So if you were to try to multiply that out, it comes out to a number with, uh, I believe it is, 23 zeros. A one with 23 zeros behind it. You say, well, well how, how do I understand that number? Well, it, it, I believe the number is a septillion. You know, you got a million, a billion, a trillion. Keep going. That number, 23 times removed, is a septillion. Tillion. Wow, that's a lot. How many is that? Well, I, I, you know, while I, as my mind thinks and I'm trying to find information, I asked Google, Google, how many grains of sand is estimated to be on the earth? And they estimate that there are four septillion grains of sand in the earth. So the next time you go to the beach, Brother Billy, and you look outside the window, and you imagine how many grains of sand that you're looking at there on that little mile area of the the, the beach. There are, that's not even a measurable percentage of how many stars are in the heaven. Now, now the, the point of this is, I believe, I will not be surprised when I get to heaven and we will know as, as we are known and we'll have access to the knowledge of God. I would not be surprised to find out that when I get to heaven, the God of Abraham, who said to Abraham, Abraham, can you count the sand? Abraham, can you count the stars? I wouldn't be surprised if there are as many stars as there are grains of sand on the seashore. Because the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. How big is the God that loves you and cares for you? His glory is beyond comprehension. Amen. And though he created the stars, as David said, when I consider, let me read it again. Come on, somebody. Amen, it's about to get good to me. Uh, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him, the God that created the stars. Amen, he created you. That God knows your name. The Bible says that the hair of your head is numbered, and that God... God, the God of glory, the God of unlimited power, the God of unlimited capacity, a God that created everything that has ever been. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. And that God was manifested in the flesh. And those wise men from the east, they saw the star, the star that proclaimed the king was born. And they walked into that room, no doubt trembling and all, and they saw the child, and they brought from their wealth and their treasures gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they left knowing they had seen what the prophets had always prophesied about. They had seen it with their eyes. It wasn't just a a glimpse into the heavens, but with their eyes they saw the God of heaven in flesh. Imagine being a shepherd that day, that night rather, that saw the angels in heaven. Amen. I, I have I have never seen an angel with my eye. I have met people that have. I, I have seen angels in the spirit. 
Amen. I, I can see the angels when I read the scripture. But these simple shepherds saw visible angels, a, a chorus of angels, a, an army of angels. They saw them in the skies. They heard them singing. And the angels gave them a personal message about the God of heaven, the Lord of angel armies, the Lord of hosts. And they saw this, this beautiful baby and there hit this the mother of this child how mary must have been amazed it's the time of the year when you hear the song <sighs> mary did you know i think he, she did <laughs> how could she know well an angel told her and then the shepherds came and told her. And then the wise men came and told her. And Joseph came and told her. And Elizabeth told her. And Zacharias told her. I believe if anybody ever knew who Jesus was, Mary knew because she knew what happened inside of her and was born from her was not from a man, but the father of Jesus was God. Come on, somebody. And today I want to encourage you, amen, we do not have to get on stinky, flea-bitten camels and go thousands of miles to worship Jesus. We don't have to have an invitation from angels singing in the heaven, amen. We can be with the presence of the Lord at any moment. We have access to the worship of the heavenly God like no one has ever had in the Old Testament. We have access to that God. He's not just somewhere we go. He's somewhere inside of us. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And just as Jesus was in that babe in swaddling clothes, Jesus dressed up and came to church today in you. Come on, somebody. Can't we give him praise? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. They said, name him Emmanuel, which be, being interpreted as God with us. But the beautiful thing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost is he goes from being Emmanuel, God with us, to Jesus Christ inside of us. Amen. I'm never alone. It doesn't matter how dark the night. It doesn't matter how deep the valley. It doesn't matter how high the mountain. Amen. I got Jesus with me. I got Jesus on the inside working on the outside amen can we give him praise hallelujah 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 amen 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 I, I'm so glad today those of you that have experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost amen you've got something that, that, that generation after generation did not even have it as a possibility John the Baptist Jesus said there was no greater man born of woman come to John. John was an exemplary individual. I'm not sure about it either. Amen. Siri's been listening. I'm blowing her mind. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. It's all right. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Serious hindering my Holy Ghost. I don't know what I was saying. I'm not sure about it either. <laughs> I really don't remember what I was saying. John, thank you. Thank you, Noah. I'm going to buy you a chicken dinner today. John the Baptist, the, Jesus said he was the best man ever born. I think Jesus would know. If Jesus said John was the best, I'm just going to take it from Jesus. John was an awesome man. And Jesus said, the least in the kingdom is greater than John. Why is that? Because John didn't have access to what the Holy Spirit poured out in Acts chapter 2. 
And so what you have available to you to work in you, to lead you, to guide you, to help you, give you wisdom, give you direction is greater than what David had and what Solomon had and what Abraham had and what Moses had. The only person that had, amen, available to him and probably, if I think about it, even what Adam and Eve have, what we've got is greater than they in that we have God walking inside of us. We have God moving inside of us. No doubt we have a reality of trouble they didn't have. We've got an empowerment and availability to something that they didn't even have. And that's what, what's going to be so good about heaven. <laughs> is, is we're going to have in heaven what Adam didn't have on earth. In heaven we're going to have context. Adam didn't know come here from Sikkim. Adam didn't know what death was. Adam didn't know what sickness was. Adam didn't know what trouble was. Adam didn't know what a mortgage note was. Adam didn't know what a car note was. Adam didn't know what a flat tire was. Adam had no context. He didn't know what he had. But some clad morning, when this life is o'er, and we have done flown away. We're going to be able to look down and then all the troubles, all the trials, all the tribulations, all the temptations, all the disappointments, all the betrayals. I'm going to be able to say, oh, I have made it. I, I made it. Amen. By the grace of God, I made it. And we'll have paradise with the context of living in the world and living in the trouble and living in the problem and we will know we will know that we overcame that old slew foot devil by the blood of the lamb and every day I'm going to make it every day I rebuke you devil every day praise the Lord every day I got my mind made up because I have a revelation that the greatest thing that I could participate in in this old wicked world is to be able to push away the racket and the chaos and the strife and the turmoil and close it all out and look up. I'm not talking about in the, through a telescope but through the eyes of faith looking unto Jesus <laughs> the author everybody say the author the beginning I don't know when it was when you got the Holy Ghost for the first time I remember it I was just a boy just a lad of a child just six years old but I remember the day when Jesus filled me with the Holy Ghost I remember the day when I was baptized in Jesus name and he washed my sins away and I've been living through the process from the beginning but there's coming a day when he's going to finish my salvation he's going to finish I'm going to be on the finish line I'm going to be past the finish line and I'm going to be able to sing a song that even the angels cannot sing. They have been looking in the salvation you've got and they don't know how you're still standing. They don't know how you're still praying but they know something. Amen. God's got something for you. He never had for them and I'm telling you you ought to stand on your feet and give God praise because he's done so much for me. He's blessed me. He's kept me. He's healed me. He's been with me every step of this long, weary travel. And one day, one some sweet day, I'm going to look up and I'm going to see Jesus. Not just as some simple star, but the Bible says we'll see him face. Oh, if that don't make you shout. I wish somebody would run the aisles right now. I wish somebody would jump up and down right now because I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, the bright. 
He's the bright and the morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000. Fairest of 1 million. The fairest of 10 billion. The fairest of septillion stars. To come on, somebody, can we give him praise? Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! What did Paul say? What did Paul say? He said, For I reckon, for I reckon that the tribulations of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want you to know today it's going to be worth it, some beautiful. It's going to be worth it, some beautiful, happy day. It's going to be worth every long mile. It's going to be worth every long trial, every heartache, every difficulty. It's going to be worth it all. Can we show the Lord how wise we are? Oh, I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can you get out of the aisle? Amen. I don't know if you just want to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, stomp your foot, but can you get out of the aisle and just give God some praise? He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all, but I'm going to praise him today. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. This, this evening, this morning, this afternoon, I'm reminded of Israel, the old man Israel, the old man. Wednesday night, Brother Ricky had cold water. Today, Sister Suzanne has hot water. I could make some macaroni in here. It's hot. But the, uh, the Jesus did say, I would, would you that you were either hot or cold. So, so we're doing it today. Amen. Sister Susanna, you heard the message today. Amen. You believe in Jesus Christ? You want Him to be your Savior. Amen. That's where it all starts. When we make up in our mind, Lord, I want you in my life. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. And that's what we're doing today. Amen. There's no, there's no miracle in the water. There's miracle power in the name of Jesus. And when we obey His Word in His name, miracles happen. Amen. And just as, just as sure as you're going to get wet when I put you down... The promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is that real. So when you come up out of the water, raise your hand, praise God, and I believe that you'll come up out of the water speaking in tongues. It's for you. Just praise the Lord with an audible voice. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. And the promise is for you. Can we all raise our, just put our hands towards Sister Susanna and let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done that's brought her to this place. 
God, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless her, heal her, help her, and deliver her. I pray, God, that miracles would be done in her life, in her family, in her children, and that, Lord Jesus, a great testimony of your power would not just happen in this moment, in the days to come. And everybody said in Jesus' name, Sister Susanna, upon the profession of your faith and in obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission, for the forgiveness of all your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God.